Thank you, Francesca, for a nice welcome words. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to be with you here. Thank you for coming. My name is Anna, and for the last seven years, I'm developing websites for enjoyed charity projects in Russia. Uh, I run a small web studio, and from this come my experience, uh, what I would like to share with you today. Uh, when developing a website is your primary activity, their number grows in time. And you may work on the several projects in the same time, and you may adopt new techniques, and surely you would use the third party's code actively, because it's an open source world. Uh, and in this case, you have to be sure that for each project you are working on, you have the correct version of the all libraries that, that you are using, because they are updated all the time. Uh, and uh, you have to maintain the compatibility to avoid conflicts. And if there is uh, some other people in your team, even if uh, it's a small team, <coughs> There is another level of complexity because you have to be sure in the same thing for every developer and every instance or installation they are working on. And finally, there is a version control question uh, because generally you don't want the third party's code goes into your wrappers because it's uh, not good, especially if you are going to uh, make it public. Uh, the long story short, that means that when you don't have a, a formal tool to manage all these issues, they quite quickly become a trouble. And today I'd like to introduce the, uh, one of possible solutions for this, uh, for this trouble. It's Composer. Composer is a package or dependency manager for PHP. It's open source itself and anybody could use it absolutely freely. But I'd like to share ex our own experience, how it could be implemented for existing workflow of developing web WordPress-based websites. Uh, what is uh, dependency, by the way? Uh, it's simply the third-party code library or framework or plugin or something like that that you are using in your own project. And the concept of dependency management is quite popular among developers, especially if they are dealing with open source code. And Composer is just a utility which uh, allow you, allows you to structure your project well and to automate the install and update process of all these codes through all the installation that you may have in development environment and testing ones and staging and so on. And so you became the, uh, the lord of libraries because uh, it became quite simple for you. You have the solid list and solid template for using in every project. So let us uh, first of all briefly discuss how the composer work itself. First of all, you have to install it in your system. Uh, better to do it globally so that it could be run in every folder uh, without any additional adjustments. And the Composer's website provides the detailed instruction how to do it for a particular operating system. So you need just follow them and you are done. There is no any difficulties. And the second part of the question for introducing the composer into your workflow is the configuration file. It's the composer JSON. And there you can describe your project, give it a name and version and other details and options. And uh, what is the most important, uh, specify all the dependencies, all the libraries you are going to use and where to find them. Uh, when you have the proper formatted composer file uh, for your project, it could also be considered as package. You can release it publicly if you want or use it internally inside team and privately in your environment, but it generally could be done. Where to find those comp composer compatible packages? First of all, there exist speci composer-specific repositories and registries where they could be found. Uh, and, uh, but actually, any other sources for open source code like GitHub, Bitbucket, and our 
uh, stories uh, would be would do the trick for you because there also could be libraries that uh, compatible with composer workflow. And finally, you create one package or several packages yourself and store uh, them in the way you like in your own repos on GitHub or release them for, pu for public registry. So all this way are allow, uh, allowed for composer. There is the packages.org. This is a central registry or official registry for a composer. It provides a simple search uh, interface through packages and even the WordPress core itself could be found there and used as dependency in our projects. Uh, actually, in your configuration, the packages.org could be omitted because composer looks through it by default. We can add these libraries in our project using, for example, a, co a command line commands. Uh, and in this case, we should add them one by one, specifying the type of repos and address for them and the list of each, uh, each dependency. But the most, more convenient way is to specify them manually in, into the configuration file, uh, list them all there, and the thing to be careful on this stage is the version for each dependency, for each plugin that we're going to use. And as any other package managers, uh, Composer provide us with a simple and reliable syntax that allow us to uh, specify the range of versions that we're going to use or specify the particular version. Uh, sometimes uh, it's more convenient to use uh, the K words, for example, to specify just the latest stable version for your project, especially in WordPress. Workflow is the most common approach, and we use this all the time. And finally, we run the command composer install. We became quite quickly addicted to it because it's opened the door for new projects. It optimizes the whole installation process. Composer itself looks through specified repositories, download all dependencies, and allocate them by default in the vendor folder. So uh, that's the common logic, and it's very simple, as you can see, and anyone could use it in a general PHP application. And surely it could be implemented to WordPress also because starting from the core itself, the, itself there is a lot of uh, third-party code that we're going to use in our project. So let's go through its logic. Which problem we have to overcome in this case? Uh, first of all, WordPress has its own tools and uh, has its own me mechanism for installing plugins, for activating or deactivating them or managing them inside WordPress dashboard, dashboard directly. It also has the, uh, the tools to updating them and updating the core itself. But these tools are intended to be used by site owners who intended to be not tech savvy users and not developers themselves. Uh, so for them, there is no this repetitive task, no repetitive patterns that we uh, meet in our everyday lives. So being developers, we need the automotion tool and we need go for the, uh, and these solutions couldn't, couldn't be helped for us. That's why we are thinking about the composer, but uh, we have to take into consideration the WordPress project structure. In common WordPress website, we have the core files that save that resides normally in the root folder. And then we have, of course, the VP config file, uh, which is specific for a particular installation. Uh, then we have the P content folder that includes uh, plugins, them, languages, inside, and finally the uploads folder with uh, made a file stored need. And we have to consider and preserve this structure because otherwise well, WordPress wouldn't be able to load, to find and load these files. But uh, when we started to think uh, about the introduction 
some new development tools in our workflow inside our team. Uh, we actually uh, was, weren't intended to use Compose or something like that. We were looking for the answer for the simple question, uh, what should be under version control? It sounds simple, but it's a bit tricky because, uh, for example, we started from committing every, uh, every file, all the code, into our own wrappers. It means committing core files, it means committing plugin files, and so on. And quite quickly, we find out that it's not a proper thing to do uh, because uh, your history and your merge pro process and your branching process became the mess quite quickly because if you update any plugin, it should be uh, merged properly, there are conflicts and there are a lot of trouble with that. And uh, when we understand that only our own code should go into uh, version control, it drives some other questions. What code hours, what code should be uh, consider it as dependency, uh, and what tool we should use, and we discovered Composer after that, and uh, where Composer compatible repositories if we're dealing with WordPress, because we get used to download files from WordPress.org wrappers, and, for uh, and so on. And finally, how to preserve uh, the structure of the folders that WordPress needs, and what to do with vendor folders in this case. Uh, we started to explore these things from uh, trying to find the working examples, and I would recommend at least two sources to do uh, this job if you would like to, <laughs> to go our path. Uh, because these sources provide us really good solutions, they work, and they have some advices how uh, the composer configuration could be adopted to, to using with WordPress. But we are now going to consider all this step by step. So, first, what is dependencies? Uh, it's quite obvious that the, the most of plugins, or for example, language part could be considered as dependency. Uh, in our team, we have a convention that all our code that we write ourselves goes in the same files, despite the functionality and performance. performance. It's, it's made just for simplicity, but it appears to be a quite good approach. But the main thing to understand is that the core is dependency itself, and we would like to use it as dependency also. But that means that we have to tune the project structure, because by default, the core files are going to the root folder, and the content files, plugin, and themes are going inside. And Composer wouldn't be able to handle such, such logic. So we have to separate them. We have, to isolate, we have to have isolated folder for core files and isolated folder for content files. Fortunately, WordPress allows us to do that quite easier. There is very good articles in the codex about the approach, how it could be done. But actually, we simply need to adjust settings to show the WordPress address should contain the core folder in it. Inside address should be uh, stay intact and include only domain as value because we would like our permalinks to stay clean. And then we have to add the custom path for VP content folder in the config file, VP config. That means that uh, VP content would be put out of the core folder and they will be in the same level in the folder structure and this logic is very easily handled by Composer. Then, there we should find the WordPress specific wrappers to, to work and to find our libraries there. As I mentioned before, the core itself couldn't be found in the packages.org and it's quite reliable source, and uh, it is updated there quite regularly. There is no problem with this source. For plugins and them, we have vpackages.org registry, 
and they are all plugins and all of them released in the official repository in WordPress.org are mirrored so that you can find them there and just copy the name, the proper name of the package in its version and list them in the composer JSON. For language park, there are also exist the registry maintained by community and nearly every language park could be found there and uh, the same workflow could be repeat. And finally, for some private code that is not released publicly, we can use the local folder. In this case, uh, each dependency, for example, a plugin, uh, has to be zipped and stored there as a zip archive file. The file name should contain the package name and its version, and inside goes the plugin code itself, a proper composer JSON that contains the name, the version, and probably some other settings. When we find out all these uh, all these sources, we can list them in Composer JSON under the repositories section. The Composer site provides the detailed uh, explanation and detailed documentation for the syntax of Composer JSON. But for repositories, we just need to specify the type and the address. And after that, we should deal with the vendor folder. We just, uh, we need to alter a bit the path where our dependencies would go. But ironically, the vendor folder should be preserved because there could be internal dependency, internal plugins that Composer use for its own work and uh, they are also would be installed there. Uh, for the just logical reason, we used to move it under the p-content, but it, it could be specified on the config section. And there could be some extra configuration, for example, the name for main WordPress folder, we called it core, but you can use any name you like. And there is a drop-in path. It's a plugin that allows us to have the several language packs to be installed in the same folder without Composer to override them. And it's quite important to uh, multilingual features to work. And finally, we just can find every dependencies we need, put them into the config file also under require or require dev section. Require dev section uh, intended for plugins or for themes that we're going to use only in the development environments. And finally, we run the composer install. Uh, and this, uh, perform all installation process automatically. Uh, Composer download the core files, the download all plugins that you're going to use and install them uh, into, way, into folders, into paths we are specified. It's that simple. After that, uh, you can work with the project, we could, you could easily replicate this in every installation for every branch, for every person in your team. And there is a mechanism that allow you to synchronize the exact version for each case. It's a composer log file where composer stores a snapshot of the particular installation. And when you need to update things, for example, after WordPress releasing the updates or after the plugin updates, you simply run the composer update command inside the project folder and everything updated. And that's all. <laughs> I hope. <laughs>